Hello, what is up you guys? My name is Riley, if you did not know, I make videos on this YouTube channel. But then again, if you're seeing this video, you're probably subscribed to this channel, so you know who I am. Anyway, if you don't know who I am, hi! Today's trans education was actually an idea that a friend gave me, and I thought it was really brilliant to actually make a video and talk about this, so I have probably one of the longest planned out videos that I've ever planned out, and I wanted to talk to you guys about transitioning. Transitioning is not something that all trans people do, but I I would say a good number of trans people do transition, including myself. And today I kind of wanted to go over the transitioning 101, like basics that you're going to need to know, things that you're going to need to prepare yourself for. Now this is going to be very vague because I wanted to make it kind of applicable for pretty much everybody who wants to transition. And I think I've made a video previously talking about my transition. If I haven't though, leave a comment, tell me, and I will make a video pertaining to my personal transition. But this is just general basics of transition, things you're you're gonna need to know, things you're gonna need to look out for, and I've kind of compiled it in this easy to swallow video for you. So let's get started. Deciding. At some point you will have had to decide that you wanted to transition. And this usually comes with knowing you're trans for however long. You could know you're trans for 24 hours and then be like, yeah, I definitely want to transition. Or you could know you're trans for like three years and be like, yeah, okay, I want to transition. This is a variable and it's different for absolutely every single person who goes through being trans. And part of this decision process is knowing that this is something that you really absolutely 100% want. Some aspects of transition can be permanent and they can't be reversed whatsoever. So like for me personally taking testosterone, the body hair and the vocal changes are all permanent things that go with transition. As well as obviously my top surgery was a very permanent decision that I had to make. So you want to make sure that this is something that you absolutely want to do. And I'm not saying that as oh make sure you're absolutely trans. I'm saying it as make sure you want to physically transition because not all trans people choose to physically transition and they're just as valid and still trans as the rest of us. Now make sure you do your research. Know what these types of hormones and surgeries will do to your body. Know what it'll do to your mental health. And I'm not meaning like know exactly because you obviously won't know exactly until you're actually going through it. But research what some side effects of hormones are on your psychiatric state and what things could turn out to be. Be sure to look up surgeons or endocrinologists in your area. And for those of you who don't know, an endocrinologist is basically a hormone doctor. They are the doctor that deals with hormone transitions and they deal with hormones for people with diabetes and other disorders and hormone deficiencies as well as trans people. And make sure you find people that are good and trustworthy in your area. Also, find other trans people that are in a similar situation to you that you can ask about their transition. You can ask about their experiences, things that they had, people that they went and saw, what their transition was like for them. Odds are that'll ease some of your anxiety about transitioning and some of your nerves. And it's nice to get a similar perspective from somebody who's been through what you are going to go through. And once all that's done, it is time to wait. This process can take a really long time, and by a long time, I mean like literally years. Waiting for appointments can take for fucking ever. And speaking of appointments, you are going to need to find a gender therapist. I'm pretty sure this is everywhere, like ev anywhere you would transition you have to find a gender therapist. I know for a fact, at least in the US and where I'm from, you have to. Or a regular therapist too. You can go to a regular therapist, but I think you also have to see a gender therapist. Most places have a minimum number of appointments you have to meet with said gender therapist before you will be approved for hormones or surgery. Your therapist and potentially your primary care physician will have to write letters of recommendation for you to get your surgery or hormones, and they have to be in favor of of your transition or you're not gonna be able to transition. And I'm pretty sure this goes for minors as well as adults. For adults, I feel like it's a little bit easier. For minors, you have to jump through more hoops because legality and like you're a child and it's just a disaster, but I'll make another video talking about that experience because obviously I transitioned when I was a kid. And once you get all of that approval process going, you will wait for a consultation appointment. Now, like I said, waiting can take a long fucking time. Once your consultation appointment comes, whether it's for hormones or surgery, it is incredibly important that you do not miss this appointment. Rescheduling it is a pain in the ass, and it is next to impossible to get rescheduled within the next 
three months. Most of these specialty doctors only work a few days a week and are constantly booked. So getting into them in the first place is extremely difficult. So you really don't want to deal with the experience of missing an appointment and then having to reschedule and then it being like nine months later and then you're like, well shit, I could be on T by now. So you're going to want to go to these appointments. Most of the time at these appointments, they will not prescribe to you on the first appointment or be like, yeah, you're approved. Well, they might for surgery, but hormones, it usually doesn't work that way. You usually have to see them a second time before they prescribe hormones. In my case, that wasn't true, but my case was completely different and weird. So, but once you get the okay from your doctor, you're basically good to go. They will give you your prescription for hormones or whatever it is, or they will set up your consultation and your surgery date. They will give you your prescription for hormones. They will usually show you how to do your shot or take your pill or use your gel or whatever type of hormone you take. And for surgery, they will usually approve you for surgery and be like, hey, call back on this day or come in on this day and we will schedule your surgery for you and go through all of the basics and things that you're going to need to know. And that's where things really get going. Like you are actually starting to physically transition with the hormones and you are prepping for your surgery, which is a permanent decision. And the wait for this seems very long, but it's also very short. Like my wait for top surgery, it felt like before I knew what was happening, it felt like it was waiting. I was waiting forever and ever and ever. And then it was like, happened and done and here we are eight months later and I'm like holy shit. So the wait is a lot shorter than you think especially once it happens and at this point just make sure you go to all of your follow-up appointments. Be sure to check your hormone levels and go get your blood work done whenever you go see your endocrinologist. Be sure you go to all of your follow-up appointments with your surgeons so you make sure everything is happening that is okay after your surgery so they can check up on you and make sure you're doing all right and from then on it's your decision what you want to do next. Do you want to say stay where you are in your transition. Do you just want hormones? Do you just want hormones and top surgery? Do you want all physical transitions? Do you only want hormones for a specific amount of time? All of these are personal decisions that you will have to make in your life and it is your decision. So you want to make sure you aren't letting anybody pressure you one way or another to do anything with your transition that you're not totally comfortable with. So basically just know your info, do your research, make sure you go to your appointments and just exist. Be you. Like enjoy this life you have. Now I'm getting sappy and don't know what to talk about. That is pretty much all of the basic information that I wish I would have known before I started my transition. But again, I started my transition when I was like 14, so physical transition anyway. So again, dig your research, look up your doctors, find support groups, talk to people. It's good. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out at all, if you liked learning about this stuff, give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. And if you're trans, I would love to know some details about your transition in the comments down below. I love reading about other people's transitions and experiences. You can also subscribe if you want because I post two videos a week on this channel and if you click that little notification bell by the subscribe button down below you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video which is pretty lit. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media which is at the Riley Kyle on all platforms specifically my Twitter and Snapchat because I'm crazy active over there. If you click the bubbles on the screen it'll take you to subscribe to all of my channels and the video box will take you to my most recent video. I love you guys a whole lot. Thank you for watching and supporting me and I will see you guys on Thursday. Goodbye.